Honestly, guys, Benchmade needs to make an extra large version of this ASAP because there are some really cool aspects to the design of the Benchmade full immunity. You don't want half immunity when it comes to your EDC system. You want the full thing. So that's what they got here with this newly released mini blade. Really interesting because you're getting all of the materials of like a Benchmade bailout, M4 steel, aluminum handle scales, but just on a really compact package. So I got competitive options today. I'm going to use the heck out of it with you, carried it a bunch uh, and see, is it really offering something good to a compact EDC system? How would it compare, you know, at this size range is just like a box cutter basically. Uh, and whether or not it makes sense for an EDC system. So let's dive in and have some fun. Mm, let's get it. M4 steel on a two and a half inch blade. Cutting edge comes in mm, 2.3 probably. A amazing Warncliffe design blade shape. I love the blade shape. Immediately I connected with that part of it. I was like, okay, I don't know about handle. We'll get about we'll get to that in a minute. Ergonomics and stuff. But the blade, whew, that nice coating on there, uh, with that amazing Warncliffe, just a slight sweep, 0 0.09. So it is like ultra, ultra slicey, very precise tip, wicked. Uh, this has to be, this has to be made extra large. They have to do it. Do it, do it now, Benjamin, do it now. Make it large, extra large, make it huge for us. I, it, this needs to be a full-size blade at some point. As it stands as the compact, that M4 steel is excellent at the wear resistance. Edge retention is insane on this M4 Rockwell 62 to 64. So the edge retention rate on this is going to be outstanding for you. Now, obviously the trade-off is you're gonna have to take a little bit of time to resharpen it. Uh, it's a high carbon, so usually those are a little easier to resharpen than a stainless, so take that in consideration. And because it's um, a high carbon blade, you are just gonna have to maintain a little bit more. Humidity, you might get some staining, some patina showing up on the exposed edge down there. So keep that in consideration, but I mean, it's gonna hold its edge just forever. And for a higher edge retention, higher Rockwell, it's actually pretty tough. It's by no means like the toughest steel around. There are way tougher steels on the market, but for the type of edge retention you're gonna get, it's relatively tough in comparison to what else may be available or that they could have gone with. So, uh, and the way the blade is shaped and the how thin it is, it is like a razor blade, but you're getting over two inches of slicing capability, which is gonna be double what most razor blade, you know, straight blade cutters. And we'll talk about that in competitive options in a moment. We'll give you. So you're just gonna get more material, but it was a dream. It was a dream, guys. It sliced through everything I put it up against and will pierce and penetrate so easily. So it's just a compact, fun blade on the blade shape and again if they add another inch to this make it three and a half inches and it'll be probably one of the most addicting blades in my collection and most high performing blades in my collection because of the thinness and the blade shape with that m4 steel and guys if you're enjoying this type of content i invite you to hit that like button and to consider subscribing becoming part of the gideon's tactical family make sure to hit that bell icon so that you can be notified every week when i put up new content just like this now the handle ergonomics are really what stand out to me and kind of set it apart from some of the competitive options i'm going to roll in here in a moment now we have that anodized aluminum handle scales with nice texturing on it so it's not slick really like that they have lots of color combinations. This happens to be almost kind of like a yellowy green. I don't know. This is their green version though. You can see there, but I love that texture. That's really nice. Now it's going to be 3.46 on the overall handle length. So you can see there, it's a three finger knife. Absolutely. But it's contouring my fingers perfectly. I love that little hit of jimping really gives me like, I really have purchased that quite a bit and that cut in with that milling around that aluminum really just makes it feel comfortable. And then that angle right there fits my pinky and my pinky kind of pushes up against it and I'm locked in. And it's the fullness I really feel that helps sell it because it's 0 0.48 uh, inches thick and the bailout for perspective is 0 0.39. So the bailout is thinner than this. So it's kind of, so it fills out the hand. It just fills it out and I feel like really in control, can really bear down on it, really, you know, pierce if necessary, even in a reverse grip. I feel like I really got some grip on it. 
versus a lot of these mini blades where it almost feels like you end up like you're just pinching it. You know, you're like, eh, here. You know, I really feel like I, I'm locked in. Uh, contoured as well. The handle scales are contoured. They're not flat, so that helps as well. Uh, standoffs, flow through construction, stainless steel liners that are milled. So there's milling in there. Coming in at like 2.3 ounces, so nice and lightweight for its size. And with that action on the axis lock, they're real smooth on bra bronze washers. And I, I just want to say that with so many companies, hopefully you guys can see this here. Yeah, there we go. Um, going with ceramic ball bearings, and there's nothing wrong with ceramic ball bearings or ball bearing, you know, whatever. Um, I, I just, a good, well-built bronze phosphorus washer is, I, I will gravitate to more. They just seem more durable. There's less blade play, excellent lockup, up, down. Um, you know, there's, there's less side to side play and, uh, it, they're just more durable. Gunk isn't going to get in there as much easier to clean, you know, just all of that. So I much appreciate that, but still nice and snappy, good thumb studs there. Whips closed, no problem. You know, it's not so small that you can't like manipulate the tool either. The manipulation is important on such a compact instrument. And so the manipulation of the tool is really good. I really am happy with the grip and then that action. Whoosh, and the thumb stud and you or you can do you know the classic pull back snap there you go same pocket clip you're going to get on the bailout and bug out loop over deep ride ambidextrous tip up good size lanyard hole and it does come with a little lanyard as well so if you didn't if you want to throw it in like your coin pocket you could do that and dump the pocket clip all together that is an option all right let's hit that pricing and got to bring that bailout in again as referenced 270 dollars for the bailout $270 for the full immunity right there. So same materials, same blade, steel, all that, more, way more compact. So, I mean, it would be nice to have this at a cheaper price point. It just, it, it seems steep when I know I can just go get the bailout. So it literally is gonna come down to size. You know, if you need a compact blade for some reason, well then, you know, you're getting basically the same performance as the bailout and blades like it, but it is, a freaking penny, pretty penny. I will have links for you guys for this as well as some of the competitive options in the description below this video. So if any of these purchases make sense for you, always appreciate it. Now, obviously, duh, a $10 work pro, <laughs> you know, pretty fast, got a pocket clip on it, replaceable blades, compact and lightweight, but I mean, nowhere near as cool. This is more ergonomic. But, you know, for a lot of the tasks, you can get almost everything done with that work pro. It's just not going to hold its edge and it's not going to be as cool. So just something to kind of consider there. Uh, and then the other two just size ranges I really have only are autos. And you can get this uh, in an auto as well. So you can find this mo the uh, full immunity in a, an auto version. And they do have a California legal sub two inch blade version as well as I think that's supposed to be for... Um, I think, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I think it's uh, government buildings. You can carry a blade in them if they're under two inches. So that might be why, but I think the handle is the same length. So the, they don't shrink down the handle. Now I don't really have too much else in this size range except for autos. So I have here a launch, American made, CPM 154, California legal. It's like two inch blade or 1.9. Really cool little claw, you know, three finger grip. Now the handle on the immunity is definitely gonna be more like better grip than a lot of these little blades like this, just cause it's narrower. It's almost like getting into two finger range. Whereas this is almost a four finger on the immunity. So, but like a hundred bucks for a little auto right there, maybe a little bit more. And then I have a buck as well. Auto California legal two inch blade. Nowhere near as slicey. Neither of these blades are going to be as slicey as the grind geometry and thinness on that immunity. But that's another option for you. I think this one's closer to like 150. I can't remember again. I'm just going to be annotating all this stuff in for you. Um, so those are some more compact, a little bit more inexpensive versions that are available. But the performance in the sense of blade steel is not going to be there, even though these are American made. And still have decent with 154 CM or CPM 154, depending on the blade. Well, I appreciate Benchmade hooking me up with this model so I could test it out for you guys, show you its capabilities, limitations. Now, obviously for someone like myself, where I have no blade limitations, length in this area, a bailout is gonna be the way to go for the same exact price, just a lot more you know, capability. And for a lot of people, you know, a box cutter can get a lot done, but if you're into knives, you're not gonna be happy with just a box cutter. You want that premium material. So if you work or live somewhere where a compact tool is required under uh, three inches, 
This is giving you like the cream of the crop in the materials that are available in form and function as well. So that's excellent to see. And I do look forward to hearing the comments below. Let me know if you live or work somewhere where something like this would be required and makes a lot of sense for you. Uh, I look forward to hearing those comments, but also for people who uh, have a hard time manipulating larger tools. You know, my wife doesn't always have the easiest time working larger tools. This is very easy for her to manipulate. Same with my boys as they get more and more into being able to use tools under supervision like this. Uh, this is very easy for them to manipulate. Larger tools is gonna be a lot harder for them so they have more confidence in using this size of tool. So there's definitely areas where a compact blade like this makes a lot of sense and hopefully we'll get a super upped large version in the near future. Appreciate you guys so much for coming over today. Look forward to hearing all those comments. Check out the other video popping up and subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.